So this is uh, the two of us are going to talk about assessing efficacy or accuracy in these large language models. And you can quite quickly get them to do something that seems an awful lot like what you're trying to uh, go after. But everyone seems to kind of be coming around to the fact that you know GPT-4 is, um, you know, I think you, you call it God at this point, but it's like, it's, it's really, really good. So it's like for summarization, you know, you've got a bunch of uh, stuff that you uh, maybe pass into GPT-4, or maybe it's like the CNN corpus that everyone kind of knows at this point where you can, you've got reporters who've actually, you know, humans that have summarized this content. Well, ultimately, it comes down to, if you take a blob of text and you have one of these models summarize it in some way, um, it's going to put, it's going to return an answer. Let's call that the bot answer. But then you're going to have a ground truth. Maybe that ground truth actually comes from a human being who's done the same thing. But ultimately you have a bot's answer and you have a human's answer, or you have a ground truth answer and you need to compare them somehow. So you can say, well, the bot's answer was actually close or really far away. Essentially you're calculating, calculating dis, dis, yeah, you're calculating distance metrics between, you know, those things. But then later on, we got these, this idea, you know, when you deal with text, you have to turn it into numbers so that we can deal with it in a machine learning sense. And you've got a bot that created a summary and you're trying to find out how close to the perfect summary. Maybe it is, it isn't even always human. Cause like lately we've been using a lot more GPT-4 for the summaries cause they're better than the humans that we've got. And then part of what you're describing is that similarity process, like how do you determine how similar to the quote perfect yours is? So in this sense, the efficacy of the model, it's not enough for it to, to be very accurate in some sense, like say it has a good uh, sentence embedding approximation between the two are, are very close. It's also that it, it adheres to these constraints that you've put up. And, and the only way really to put up the boundaries for these models to, to adhere to those constraints is for you to do some sort of, typically it's some sort of fine tuning. How does one go about the business of forming a ground truth here? Like what is your, what is your goal? What are you comparing to? What is your standard? Like you that's, that's also part of this is like, with respect to efficacy assessments, yes. you may not want to co-mingle dif discourse style because it sort of pollutes your, your metric on some level. Or you may want to include it because that's the, that's the only style of communication that you're looking for, you know? So, but I guess what you ultimately, ultimately is from a sort of like an analytical perspective is you have these different dimensions by which you can assess uh, quality between essentially two strengths, you know? One is the gold standard provided by what you would think of as a human. This is what we're going for. Then you have these different dimensions, you know, it could be context, could be length, it could be, uh, you know, how how cheeky it is, attitude, etc. I will form an overall score, an efficacy score, say, based on a weighted average of all of those dimensions. Uh, what we've discussed thus far, let's say when we're talking about a world of sort of like GTP3 and prior models, these are LLMs that aren't quite as sophisticated as the current models are. You could try to essentially give it prompts, so to speak, and maybe in that prompt, you can give it an example of what you're looking for. So now in the current standard, which is GTP4, you have these things almost like you tell it the type of assistant that you you would like to generate. Like you say, hey, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a principal in a school district and I wanna be able to communicate better with my parents. And so, you know, start from that attitude you know, start from that position and then do your stuff forward from that. Maybe the forward from that are instructions. I'd like you to summarize these large documents and, and put it in simple language that I can more easily communicate to the parents, et cetera. And I will tell you that that technique and that approach got so good from my perspective that it actually was beating humans. So let's talk for a moment about actually just using the model to you know, itself to assess efficacy along different axes. Like you, you mentioned like offensiveness, um, you know, there's things like empathy. There's like, there's a number of a attributes, empathetic, uh, clear in our response, non-offensive, yet edgy. And you can imagine just like you have a st like an old stereo dial where you've got, you know, you've, you're, you're sort of got different abilities to light up those attributes. Now, 
Now you can go back and very easily use these models themselves to assess for a given generation, how offensive are you? How edgy were you, et cetera? So part of the efficacy in your model could be almost what we call like communication traits. So what you do is you, like, like you say, you know that this, these LLMs and particularly GTP4 is so good that you can go back and say, well, look, why don't you give me a rating on empathy for this response? And you can even say to it, give me a number. If we rewind six months ago, maybe even, you know, like a good chunk of our outputs, we were kind of satisfied by saying this is good or bad, you know, correct or not. Now, we, now, fast forward to now, we're in a world where almost everything these things say are reasonable. So now we're trying to get to perfect responses. And so perfect means assessing them in a more holistic way. 